Welcome, and thank you all for joining us today for GoGuardian Teacher Level 1 webinar. My name is Jackie, and I'm a product trainer here at GoGuardian. Today, I'm going to show you how to maximize the power of our classroom management tool. GoGuardian Teacher is a tool to help you gain insight into how your students are using technology in the classroom. This course is primarily for those who have never used GoGuardian Teacher. If you are fairly experienced, we recommend signing up for our Level 2 course. Of course, if you'd like a refresher, stick around. Today, we're gonna to be talking about getting started with classroom students and co-teachers, chatting with students, using commands to manage the classroom, and our reporting options. We have a customer success manager standing by to answer any questions you may have. Feel free to chat into the question box with questions at any time. This session is also being recorded and will be sent to all attendees after it concludes. Finally, if any other faculty or staff from your school were unable to attend this session, no need to worry. We'll be hosting teacher webinars every week through the end of the month. Let's get started. Now, to get started in GoGuardian Teacher, you're gonna log in at teacher.goguardian.com. I'm already logged in and have some classes created already. Now, if you are brand new to GoGuardian Teacher, this dashboard is going to be blank for you, and that's okay. You have a couple of different options to add your classes. If your school is using Clever or ClassLink to sync over rosters, that will show in your pending tab area on the left-hand side. Your classes will show up here. There will be a blue Accept button. Once you hit Accept, those classes will move up into the Active tab. Now, if you are leveraging Google Classroom, you can import your Google Classroom directly into GoGuardian using the Import Google Classroom button. Here, you will see a list of all of your classes. If you don't see your list right off the bat, go ahead and click that Reconnect Your Google Account button. You can select all by checking the box, or you can select individual ones and import those classes here. Now, you can also create your classrooms manually in GoGuardian Teacher using your green Add Classroom button. You can go ahead, enter in all of your information here, and add that class. Once you have your class created, we're ready to get started by adding our students. To add our students, we can go into that Settings tab in the upper right-hand corner of your classroom tile go down to add students, and then we'll be able to add in our students here. You can use the green add students button for your manually created GoGuardian teacher classrooms, either using an enroll code. So you have your students head to enroll.goguardian.com and type in the six digit code. You can also add students using their individual email address. So going ahead, copying over those student emails here, or you can upload a CSV. And a CSV, it's just a fancy Excel spreadsheet with your student emails in the first column. Once we have our students enrolled, if you need to unenroll them at any point, you have this blue remove button next to their name. Now, if you use your Google Classroom or your Clever Classroom class link, classroom to get started, you can go ahead. Your students will already be rostered in. So we will sync them directly over from Clever, ClassLink, or Google, whichever way you chose. Now we also want to add our co-teachers to our classroom here. So on the left-hand side, we'll see this Teachers tab. When you click here, you'll be able to add a teacher manually using that green Add Teacher button. You can search for your co-teacher's name, select them, and then choose their classroom role. Each of these roles have different permission levels tied to them. If you want to know more about what those permission levels are, go ahead and hover over that information icon and click on the hyperlink here. This will open up a Help Center article that shows you all of the different permissions available to those users. Now, if you used Clever or ClassLink to sync over your classroom, and your co-teacher is assigned already in Clever or ClassLink, your co-teachers will be added already. So you don't need to go through and add them again, they will be present. 
All right, we have our students and our teachers enrolled. Let's go ahead and get started with our class. Now I'm gonna come back in the Navy toolbar on the left-hand side, click on that Classrooms tab. Here, I have the ability to start my class directly from my classroom tile. Now there is one default setting here that I wanna talk about. That's the option to start with student teacher chat turned on or off. If you would like chat turned on right off the bat in your class, you could go ahead and toggle this to on. I'm gonna start with my class with a toggled off so we can see it a little bit later. Now to start our class, we have to choose how long we want this classroom session to run. Do we want it to be a quick 30 minute session or maybe a full 90 minute block? We can go ahead, choose one of those presets or enter in a custom end time. So if we wanted to go through and say, all right, this class is gonna end at 11.55. Now I can hit that blue start class button to get it going. As my students come up and online here, I wanna talk a little bit more about that chat option that we talked about earlier. So if you remember, I started with chat toggled off. So my students are unable to chat with me right off the bat. We can see that on our student tiles with that chat icon with a little slash through it. Now, if I wanna turn this on for my class as a whole, up in the upper right-hand corner, we will see that off toggle next to the word chat. When I toggle that on, all of those student tile icons will get a navy chat icon. Here, I'm able to go through, find a student, and send a chat out. Maybe Stephanie was out sick yesterday, and I want to check in with them. Just say, hey, how are you feeling today? And send that out. Stephanie is going to get that chat in the bottom left-hand corner of their screen. They will be able to click into that teal chat icon and we can see that Stephanie is able to come back and respond. You'll see that check mark go to green saying they have seen that message and when their response comes in, you will get a notification. Now, we can also go through and send announcements to our students. So to be able to see all of our students who are available to chat, in the bottom right-hand corner, we will see that chat icon here, just above the help bubble. When we click there, it opens up a side drawer. All of our students in our classroom are here. And then at the very top, next to my name, we're gonna see this megaphone icon. That megaphone will give you the option to send an announcement to the class as a whole. Announcements are a little bit different from chat, because they are going to show up on the student screens as a pop-up and it is going to pause their browsing until the student acknowledges that announcement. So maybe I wanna give a quick time check for my students. Hey, five minutes left, start getting ready for math. And I can send that announcement. Out. Now that is gonna show up on all of my student screens as a pop-up they will go through and click got it to acknowledge that and be able to start browsing again. So whether your students are in your classroom, out in the library, maybe they're working in the hallway, you can go through and you can make sure that everybody gets that exact same message and that same time check. Now let's take a look at what else we can do in our live classroom session. We can see all of my student tiles here now these tiles are a little bit small for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna zoom in using my slider bar in the upper right hand corner. I'm gonna go up to four per row, makes it a little bit easier for me to see my students' tiles. Now, one of my students in my class, Bianca here, Bianca has an IEP letting me know that they have trouble following multi-step directions. I want to make sure that Bianca is up and on the same page as the rest of my class at the same time. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to click on Bianca's tile here, opening up their individual student screen. Now at the bottom, we will see this command bar here. Commands are going to be your direct action pieces. So if I want to make sure that my students are all getting to the same page at the same time, and I want to help knock out one of those steps of directions for Bianca, I'm going to click on this open new tab command. 
When I click on open new tab, it prompts me to type in a website for them. I'm going to go ahead, send Bianca over to Tween Tribune. That tab is going to open up for them. And then we can get moving from there. Now, if I want to take that one step further, I want to make sure that Bianca knows exactly where to sign in on this website. I can use our new annotate tool. So when I click that annotate button, I then get to go through, choose a pointer color. I always suggest doing a color that contrasts with the website you're on. So I'm going to choose red in this case, and then you can choose your different pointer sizes for small, medium, or large. In this case, I'm going to keep that large button and I am going to put it right over my sign in option so that Bianca is guided directly to our sign in. Now you're going to see that those different icons disappear on their own. Five to 10 seconds later, those icons will disappear. You don't have to clear them from your student screens. Your students don't need to clear them. They will all just remove themselves so you don't have that extra step going through and helping guide those students. Now, as we're going through, we have Bianca up and on the same page as the rest of the class. Maybe as I'm scrolling through, I see a student who isn't quite where we need to be right now. I can see that Afshin here is trying to play a game that's getting blocked. I can hover over this icon here and close out their tab. When I close that tab, it will push Afshin to their next available tab, which is their Google Doc, which is where we want them to be. Now, you can also take these commands on a little bit of a larger scale. Let's say that we have students going out on a field trip. I wanna make sure that the three students who haven't turned in their permission slip have time to come up and let me know if they're able to get those signed. I'm gonna go through, I'm going to check the box on my students' tiles who still need to turn in that permission slip. And then we will see that command bar open up at the bottom. Here, I am going to choose my command to lock device. This is going to pause student browsing and display the message that I am put here. So let's say I wanna make sure that my students come up please come see me. I send out that lock device command. We will see our students browsing is disabled. Now Becca comes up, they have their permission slip, they turn it in, I'm good to go. I can go ahead and unlock just Becca's device by clicking that unlock device on their tile. Or I can check the box when Baran and Diane come up, they didn't have time to get it signed, mom and dad weren't home last night, no problem, they can turn it in tomorrow. I check the box, I unlock their devices in bulk. Now you can also take these commands on a class-wide basis. So if you need to be able to open a tab for all of your students, say you're working with the younger grades, K through twos, you wanna make sure that everybody's on the same web page. up in the left-hand corner, just above your first student's tile, we will see that checkbox, when we check that box, all of our students in our class get selected. And from here, we can take any of those actions as well. Now we have our live screens view here. We also have another view that we can take a look at with our student tiles. And that is the option to view it in a timeline view. So up at the top, I'm going to come over to my timelines tab. This is going to show me where the students actively are on the right-hand column in that now area, but I can also see where they were previously. Let's say that we're working in stations and I'm doing benchmark testing with a group of students. I can see David being a little bit silly over there. Maybe I look up at the clock, I take down the time, and then I go, you know what? I don't have time to go check what David's doing right now as I'm testing but I want to go back and I want to see. Here, I can go through. I can scroll back to previously in the class. I can click in and see what other websites that student had open at that time as well, how long they were on an individual site. You can also take your commands 
from this same timelines page, either, either using these three vertical dots or again by checking the box next to the students' names. Now your timeline view is great for your live classroom sessions. Maybe you're up and walking around, you start your class, you don't get back to your computer until five minutes before the class ends. You can come back, see a great overview of what the students were doing. But let's say your class ends, your students move on to their next classroom and you wanna go back and you wanna see it. All of your timeline data is saved. So if I come back to my classrooms tab using that Navy toolbar on the left-hand side, I can click into my classroom tile and I can see previous sessions that have run. Your session history will be saved for up to six months in the past. Now I can also see if I had previous chats with students. So I can come into this chat log, see what I sent to Bianca that day, and then go ahead and take a look at where my students were browsing on this individual day during that class time. Now we can also see our student reporting on a one-to-one -one basis. If you would like to see a little bit more on one individual student, you can do that in the Navy toolbar on the left-hand side, clicking on our student reports area. When we click on student reports, we get to choose our classroom, choose our student, let's say Diane. We're gonna check out the last 30 days for Diane. How have they been doing? We'll get a quick snapshot of Diane's top websites, top docs, and top Google searches. We will also see any interventions that the student had taken with them. Now these interventions will show any actions that I took during my class. So I went through, I've locked Diane's, Diane's screen three times in the last month. I've, I haven't needed to open any tabs and I haven't needed to close any tabs. This is great. Earlier in the semester, Diane was having a hard time focusing. I was having to take interventions repeatedly to make sure that they were up and on task. But we put a new incentive in place and now Diane is staying on task and really hitting those benchmarks and those goals that we set. I might use this as a jumping off point to have a conversation with Diane or maybe Diane's guardians, applauding them for this great new uh, focus that they have. Now we can also see any past browsing history that Diane has had. So if you need to go back, pull a resource that a student lost or anything of the sort, you can do that here, copying that URL and sending it out directly to them. Now, when we are done with our class, if you jump away from your live classroom, you can always get back to it up at the top under that sessions bar at the top clicking on that classroom session. Now to end our class, you can either let the time run out. You could update your time, maybe removing some of it here, saying we're gonna end it at 11.50, or maybe you need to extend it by a couple of minutes. You can go ahead and choose one of those presets or just type in a new time. Or we can go through and we can manually end our session using the red end session button on the upper right hand corner. When I hit that end session, we will get a quick check in. Hey, how did it go? Let our teams know how everything went with your classroom session. And then I can go back into my timeline and see any of that data. Now, if at any point you have any feedback or any ideas that you would like to see implemented in the future, go ahead and navigate to that help tab in the Navy toolbar on the left-hand side, there's going to be an option here to vote on new features. When you click on that view suggestions, it will open you up directly to our product team's ideas page. You can enter in new ones or upvote ones that you would like to see implemented and our product team will take a look. I appreciate you joining me for our level one GoGuardian teacher webinar. If you have any questions, we have team members available for you for another 10 minutes. You can also reach out to your school's GoGuardian super user or check out our GoGuardian Teacher Help Center for further support. Have a wonderful rest of your day.